Today we are back out in the shop because we are going to give you a rundown of the Yes Welder Plasma Cutter. We actually got to hook this up and use it for the first time the other day. It was surprisingly simple to hook up and be able to cut metal having absolutely no idea what we were doing. So we are beginner plasma cutters, beginner welders. I've done some flux core welding for years, but nothing, nothing pretty and not with good equipment. So this is not going to uh, be a video that you're going to watch to hone your skills and become a better uh, plasma cutter or welder or anything like that. But what I'm hoping to do today is share with you guys the Yes Welder product and if you have ordered this machine and you're just looking to do a quick start and get up and running so that you can cut some metal, that's what this is going to be. I'm gonna show you how to set up your polarity, hook in your, your hoses, your ground, and all of that so that you'll be ready to, uh, to get down to business and cut some metal with it. So hopefully this will help a few people out. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show you here, now of course, turning on your machine, you can handle that, switch on the back, hit your home button, and tune into plasma cutting, and press the right button one time, and it takes you to the plasma cutter. You can change your amperage by turning this knob right here, so you can turn it down to 30 amp. You're plugged into 220 voltage. You get your amperage set where you want it, and you can go up to 40 amps, and you wanna set your air pressure that you plug into it from, uh, about 55 to 65 pounds and your yes welder comes with a chart to show you those things so if you look at the chart here under 220 and of course you had the same for 110 if you're using that it will tell you your thicknesses that it, these settings are for so if you're going to cut these thicknesses of metal right here you would use the 40 amp setting 58 to 65 psi and this tells you your speed millimeters per minute so that's like 0.38 inches per second or um, just under a half inch per second at that uh, for that metal thickness and that psi that's how fast you can move now i don't really have any experience to be able to tell you how quick that is but you know that's something that you can kind of see when you start cutting now the other chart here for your cutting it shows you right here your polarity that you need to set um, and where to hook your ground wire when you get ready to plug in now your torch is pretty self-explanatory because it only fits in one segment but the red dots are what indicate where you plug in your torch your ground wire and then we want to use this polarity here so let's go set the machine up for that all right now inside here is your uh, polarity strap so we got to take this loose and flip it over to this side right here in order to match that chart snug those up so the next thing we're going to do is hook up our torch and our ground cable and the torch plugs in right here and here and our ground is going to be this one on the far side here for plasma cutting this has a little slot right in the top there that goes on top and these are a little tight to get back in there but uh, Stick your fat fingers back in there and spin that. For your grounding cable, these are just made with a little kind of oblong connection there. And uh, you just put that in to the top and twist it to the right until it snugs up. And you're ready to go. Get your ground clamp and your cutting torch. Now your cutting torch has these consumables. Um, so I'll kind of show that real quick. Um, we haven't had to replace any of these yet. We've only used this one time. Um, and from what I understand, your technique can have a lot to do with how long your consumables last. I found myself kind of making contact as I cut, so I would drag it along the metal. And that's what will actually wear them out quicker. But what that did was kind of keep the flow directed downward and kind of hide the arc a little bit. Um, which, which I like, but some guys kind of hover above it as if they're using a cutting torch. And I think your consumables will last longer if you cut that way. I don't know what the proper method is, but uh, 
I'm just kind of trying to tune it in and figure out what works and we were able to cut what we needed to cut with it so that works for me the gauge that comes with this does not measure in psi so even though they were smart enough to create the little uh reference chart telling you to set it between 58 and 65 psi they give you a gauge that you have no idea what that psi is now one tip that i was given when i was kind of setting up the shop and getting ready and, and order my plasma cutter was make sure you have a good water filtration system or, or separator in your airlines because that can ruin a plasma cutter quickly so Here's what I got. I wanted to share my setup in case you haven't watched my air compressor install video. But we have our 60 gallon compressor plumbed in. Um, it runs through this water separator here and this regulator, which we keep set at 100 PSI. And then we have PEX lines feeding the shop where we have several outlets and several other regulators and water separators. So in the back of the shop, we have this water separator here, this regulator, and that's what we're hooked to with 60 PSI there. And then your actual Yes Welder First to MP200 comes with this little water separator on the back. So I'm actually running through three separate water separators on here. So we should have pretty dry air coming in here. So we are getting ready to cut a piece of, what is this, 3 16ths? Yeah, about 3 16ths diamond plate steel. Um, now it's really ugly, dirty, rusty. It's been laying out in the mud forever. And we just cleared it up, cleaned it up so that we could get a good connection. Um, and then I put me a little makeshift guard on here so I can try to cut straight. This is actually my first time even trying to use a guard. So you're kind of, you know, seeing what it's going to be like if you're brand new to all this and you get your wet yes welder. This is the kind of results that you can expect. Now, protect yourself, wear boots, don't wear any kind of cloth shoes or anything like that because it's going to blow sparks. Um, get yourself a good pair of gloves, good pair of plasma cutting glasses. That way you can look as cool as I do right now. Probably wouldn't be too hard to do. All right, Let's see what we can do here. Quit laughing at me. <laughs> you could look as cool as my son in his cut off jorts. Alright, so do you go forward or backwards? Either way, but I think you're dragging. Dragging? Alright, we're gonna drag. Here we go. Alright, I'm going too fast, so let's start over here. Part of my deal is I'm not cutting straight, I'm cutting at an angle, which is making it thicker. Yeah. Um, check the air pressure on the wall and see if it's still set at 60. Yeah. Sure. 60. No, I'm just barely under it. But I'm, I'm going to try to hold my torch good and straight, which is going to change where I'm cutting, but that's okay. Guys, I'll tell you the first thing you, you want to remember is that you're handling something that was just making molten steel because it's going to be hot 
and it's it's really easy to uh, kind of forget that because it cuts so quick and easy. But anyway, um, ended up with a good straight cut on this. Um, it's not perfect. It kind of was cutting just a little bit of an angle, but using that guard, I was able to make a pretty good straight cut there. Um, yeah, and it's pretty exciting to be able to do this. Now, obviously, I've got a lot to learn, so I will tell you guys, if, if you are somebody who does a lot of metal work and fabrication, I'd love your comments and suggestions. Jump in there and tell me some tips and tricks, things that I can do to improve my cuts, make sure that I get them good and straight, and control my, my flow and all those things. So hopefully this video will help you out. If you just got the new Yes Welder MP200 and you're ready to start plasma cutting, you can get your, uh, get your hoses and uh, everything hooked up, get everything working, and uh, you'll be able to cut some metal and get started. This is gonna be kind of the first in a series of videos that I'm gonna do just like this on this Yes Welder first this MP200. Here's the thing, it's a brand new machine to me and I don't claim to be an expert at really anything, but I can figure stuff out and so I'm kind of sharing my process along with you all because I know this is the kind of welder that a lot of beginners and hobbyists are going to buy to get started in it and so I want to give you guys kind of a quick startup, show you the things to look at to get yourself set up and, and operating. We've got some fun projects we're going to be doing with this. Um, this truck right here, 71 GMC, that uh, my son is working on building. Um, we've got to weld up some exhaust and stuff for it. We have to fabricate things along the way, so we'll be working on that. He is actually, he's got some old exhaust over there he's cleaning up right now because he's just going to practice weld. Um, starting out with the MIG welder, we got our uh, argon and CO2 tank filled up and uh, we're gonna this will be the first time we've used that we've done some flux core welding and all but of course you know that makes splattery welds and all that so we're trying to upgrade get a little bit better so uh, he's gonna be working on that process so we'll share some of this stuff along the way with you guys so appreciate y'all watching y'all have a good day